two year review to Kodiaks. Hopefully you guys have seen my one year review that I did on the Kodiak. It has been a awesome ride. I've liked it so much that I now have two Kodiaks. I have two different systems here. One using the B&D panels, which you'll see on the website, as well as the Predator 50 panels. Both of them have been working great. I absolutely love them. I'm going to show you the differences and what I've kind of done over the last year uh, with my kit and how to expand it. First of all, one of the questions that I get often is what is this port right here? Now this is a 30 amp RV port. Basically, you can attach this to your RV or your, your camper, whatever it is, and you can supply the power for it. It's will easily run microwaves as long as nothing else is running, small air conditioning units, units that we have found that are about 5,000 BTUs, and they'll run for 20 hours without any, anything else attached or the panels connected as well. But one of the cool things that I did is I actually just went down to Harbor Freight and I got this 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. I already have six normal outlets here, each one of them at 15 amps, which is plenty, but I don't have an RV and so I never use this. So having this allows me just to add one more outlet. It'll easily run anything that I need to put on it. Now you've probably noticed by now these little adapters here connected to my Kodiaks and you're probably wondering what they are. These are custom made panel watt meters. So the screens here, they do not tell us how much energy we are producing. They only display how much energy we are outputting. These custom watt meters actually allow me to see live exactly how much wattage, amperage, everything that I'm making off of my solar panels. So I can see here, I'm right at 30 amps, about 400 watts. So I know that I'm getting 400 watts of energy right now. If the weather stays the same all day per hour, that's 400 watts. Well, that means I can charge this puppy up from 70% in about an hour. That's pretty awesome. These are my B&D 100 watt panels. They work phenomenally. They are extremely lightweight. They're flexible. They're durable. They can take a beating. They're monocrystalline, so they're highly efficient, and they produce a great amount of power. It works great. If I have a cloudy day, I have the six panel connected. If it's a normal day like today, then I only have five panels connected because I don't want to over amp that side charging port on the Kodiak because over 30 amps can get it really hot. And then you can see over here on my second Kodiak, I've got 600 watts in Predator 50 panels. Now, these are the panels that I used in my original video, and I still love them. They still work great. There's actually a new model that has come out. Any kits that you purchase are obviously going to come with the newest models. But one thing very in particular is that you can only attach three panels together at a time. No more. Now, this is one of the issues that I have with these other groups selling these kits, is they're selling five panels or... Uh, six panels or however many panels predator panels without splitters and that's a big problem because the wiring inside each panel can only take about 150 watts worth of energy so if you have 250 watts worth of energy being produced and so you've got five panels lined up well it can only carry that 150 watts so you're wasting 100 watts and that means that 100 watts is going to convert into heat and you don't want heat because electronics and heat don't go well together. On a hot day, that's a different story. The panels are obviously going to get hot, but the wiring carrying that extra energy is where the real problem comes in. An interesting fact, I've been testing both the B&D and the Predator panels for efficiency differences being up at an angle versus being flat on the ground. And there is only, from what I can tell on all of my testing, a 10% difference in output at a maximum usually about a 5% difference. So what that means is that this panel, or these sets of panels would be making 150 watts at their best. Well, minus 10% would make it 135 watts, whereas these would be making about 150 being up at the right angle. So 135 watts out of here without having to spend the money and take the time to build this stand is pretty dang good. I'm happy with that. So the stand helps put them up at an angle, but honestly, it's not needed at all. And the exact same thing goes for the B&D panels. They work perfectly great laying on the ground. They are lightweight, and so they are going to fly around a bit. Compared, this panel is 4 pounds, and that panel is 4 pounds. So what that means is this 4 pounds is making 100 watts, and that 4 pounds is just making 50 watts. 
So two of these panels is equivalent to one of these panels. That's one of the advantages of the B&D. It's one of the reasons why I like them is it's a little bit lighter. These are much more robust because they have aluminum backing, whereas these just have a UV proof plastic backing. One of the advantages I've found of using a stand is it's really easy to make sure that these corner pieces stay connected in the right spot. So along this PVC, you can see I've got some bungee cable uh, with little balls on the end. And that just makes it easy to loop it through the little holes on the corners and attach it to this beam. But that also helps make sure everything stays in place. One of the issues that I've had and some, uh, actually my aunt found, uh, we did a week long preparedness camp out trip last year where we took all of our preps out to the woods for a week and just survived. That was the goal. And so we all had Kodiaks because they're awesome. And we all have the Predator 50 panels. What we found is that after these get warm, they're easy to slide apart. And just like that, a quarter of an inch, half an inch move, this is now no longer connected. You can see how these ribbons or these cables here, they've not lined up with this wiring. And so that's the problem is because that's making 100 watts, but it's not transferring it through here to come to the cable to go to the combiner box. So we were out doing some activities that day and came to find out that when we got back to our tents, her Kodiak didn't charge up because she had misaligned her panel. So one of the things to be aware of is you need to make sure that these panels are all the way lined up. Now you will notice that there's a difference between these two panels and the rest of the panels. These are my original 10 panels that I had, okay? And I got two more to be able to get 600 watts. They look different. This has a glossy finish. This has kind of a matte finish. The cells are smaller. There's not as much gap in between as you can see. These new panels are really awesome. They're efficient, they're the same weight and everything like that, but are a little bit more durable and don't scratch as easy. So them being more efficient makes it more worthwhile. And because this is what's now in manufacturing, that's what you're gonna get if you wanna get the Predator kit. One of the other cool things about these panels that makes them really nice to use is they've now added these little arrows right here. So as long as these arrows are connected, I know that these wires are connected and it's transferring that energy across the panels just fine. They're also a nice snug fit, so they don't slip as easy, but it's still, you wanna make sure that if they're on the ground or whatever, that they don't get bumped and, and moved because simply disconnecting those contacts, which are pretty small, they're probably a quarter of an inch wide, simply disconnecting those can mean that you're not getting the energy from that panel transferred to the next panel. It's really important. And of course, they're still highly durable. You can still walk on them, beat up on them, there's not going to be a problem using those. They're definitely great. So I talked a little bit about this combiner box. You can see that each set of three panels has a cable coming to this four to one combiner box. Now, like I mentioned, this is something that you absolutely need to have if you have more than three panels. Even if you have four panels, then you want to make two arrays of two panels and have them connected here. These are the old cables that came with my older panels, and this is the new cable that came with the new panel. I added this little Velcro strap just for storage, making it easier when I put it in the bag and so on. And then I've got my 50 foot heavy duty Nutric cable here. So one of the things that I really try to do is because I don't do this as a full time business, I just do it to try to help people get prepared, is I try to offer the absolute lowest prices that I can on everything, okay? Now, I'll get emails every now and then from people saying that they find cheaper kits in other websites. And yeah, that's gonna happen, because of the quality of the equipment that you're getting in those other kits. So for example, these 100 watt panels, there are other kits out there where they use a cheaper panel, but that means that you're not producing as much energy, that they are fragile, and that they are heavy. Those are the three most common things with other panels, especially the rigid panels, is that they're gonna have those problems. Now for me, I don't use these kits just for camping and having fun and showing them off. I use them all the time and I use them in emergencies. Like I m mentioned in the other video is I had two power outages in just one winter and having the right panels makes a big difference. So yes, these panels per 100 watts are more expensive than other panels, but they are the highest quality you can get at the best price from my website. I don't want to spend 
thousands of dollars on something just to have it not work well. Even the other kits are still, you know, they're, they're not cheap. This is a big investment, but I need to make sure that I'm getting the highest quality. And that's where these B&D panels make that difference. The majority of the panels you find online are roughly $170, $160 around there. Those do not perform as advertised. They really do not. In fact, I've got a couple of those panels here in my garage uh, from my initial testing. I bought some of those to, to test them, see how well they worked, and they simply didn't perform. They were only producing 40 or 50 watts per panel rather than 100. That's a big difference. I don't want to buy 600 watts in panels and only be able to produce 300 watts. That just doesn't make sense to me. Now, my sister actually has one of the 100 watt panels, but it's a rigid frame, kind of the type that you'd put up on a house or you'd see on a house. And what happened to that panel is actually the side of it got bumped. So not the B&D panel, but she had a different one that the side of it got bumped and it shattered the entire tempered glass pane in front of it. So now, not only did she cut herself on the glass, but two, it'll still produce energy, but not nearly as much as it could before. So you may be able to save a little bit of money by getting some cheaper panels. However, they're gonna be a lot more fragile and not as good in the long run. I'm not interested in that. Um, you know, I really plan on if I needed to use this for a year nonstop, I needed to last that year. And with the B&D panels or the Predator panels, that's completely possible because of how they're designed. And that's the reason they're the panels that I recommend. I don't recommend the other kind. If you want the other kind, I'll be happy to help you uh, do that and, and save some money there. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't do this for the money. I do it to help people get prepared, but it's really important to know those differences. One of the things I do like about the B&D panels is it's really easy to just connect the cables right into these splitters. And I know that I've got a for sure connection as soon as it's clicked in. That's one of the big advantages of it is it's just easy to use and you can never mess up the, the wiring. Only the male ends will connect to the female connectors and and vice versa so even switching up these black and red cords if i did that there's no way i can miswire it so it's really uh fail proof which is another thing that i like things that i recommend is just using these extension cable wheels to wind up your cables especially the predator cable it's really thick and heavy duty the b and d cables are really thick and heavy duty as well but they seem to be more manageable than the other one uh, for the Predator panels. So yes, I really do own two Kodiaks. I really do love them that much. Um, I have made these the best that I can with adding the watt meters and adding all the other attachments and so on. The base camp lights are awesome. As you saw in my previous video, they are extremely low energy and really bright. So I highly recommend those. And that'd be these right here. Uh, they connect right into this port here. This is a DC port. So even when this unit's turned off, these DC ports here stay turned on. So I can be running these lights and saving a little bit of energy at night when I uh, don't need to be running a bunch of heavy equipment. One of the things to know about these watt meters that are custom made for me, they need six volts to turn on. So for example, if I'm using this all day, well this is turned on because I plugged it in when the sun was out and bright and it was getting more than six volts. So it kicked it on. However, say the sun goes down, the next morning the sun comes up, well, as soon as sunlight is starting to come out, this starts getting energy. The problem is it's not six volts. It slowly goes from zero volts to 0.1 volts and 0.2 and then all the way up to whatever volt it's running at. Right now it's running at 20 volts. So the issue will be is that this will turn off at night when the sun goes down because it's not getting power. When the sun comes back up, it'll need to be reset. So all I do to reset it and I just take one of these cables and I just disconnect it just a tiny bit until that turns off and then I click it back on and it works just fine. One of the questions I get all the time is what the heck is this thing here? And this is a tool to help you disconnecting your MC4 connectors. So for example, right here, I've got these MC4 connectors and they can be really hard to do with your fingers sometime. So I can use these prongs or these prongs and just push it on there and it disconnects the connector for me that way it's just easier to use. And one of the other questions that I commonly get are, what do these lights mean? Uh, this is, each dot represents 10% of the battery being charged, okay? So the red, the two dots means it's at 20%. The three dots here, if those all three were there, would mean it's at 50%, each dot being 10%. Now I've got one green light on, which means I'm at 60% charge. 
Now, one of the other things to keep in mind with this watt meter is, for example, right now, the panels are not connected. The cable is in, but it's not locked in. So it's showing zero watts right here. And that's simply because the panels will only deliver the power when the power is being used or drawn. And the power is being used or drawn because this isn't at 100%. If this is at 100% and this were connected, then it would continue to say zero because there's nowhere for that energy to go. But right now, it's cloudy. Clouds just came in, so I'm not gonna be producing much, but I click that in, and it says I'm making 123 watts. But this will go back to zero once the battery is completely full. So another thing to keep in mind, if you connect it and it seems like it's not reading out properly, that's simply because either your battery's full or this isn't connected. So I just twisted that off, now it's back down to zero. Another common question I get is about the panels when they arrive. So they ship directly from the manufacturer. So those will arrive separate from the Kodiak, but they will come with a plastic covering on them. And that's simply to protect them while they're being shipped. Make sure they're not scratching and so on. As soon as you get them and are ready to use them, you can go ahead and peel that off. The so shipping usually takes about three days uh, for the Kodiak and any accessories that you get that are direct from uh, energy to manufacture. So for example, if you order lights with your Kodiak, then these are going to come in the box with your Kodiak. Now another one of the cool things is that I can tell right now it's pretty cloudy out. I'm making 115 watts. I've got about a 60% battery charge right now. These things are pretty dang powerful. I've got this connected to a drill press right now. And that drill press is right here. You can see it's plugged in, the extension cord coming in. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and you can see what happens here on the Kodiak. As you see, there's a quick spike, and now it's running at about 265 watts total, and 10 watts of that is roughly to run the inverter and the lights and the fan and so on. So I know that I'm using 250 watts on that drill press. So if I've got 100%, that means I could use about, I could use that for about four hours. Now obviously, the load is gonna get much higher as I actually press the drill into wood or whatever I'm drilling, because it's gonna be working harder. So four hours running like it is now, probably more like two hours if I were running it nonstop. And this is just something that you know it takes a lot of amps, takes a lot of wattage to use, and the Kodiak runs it just fine. Now, one of the cool things is that because I've got my panels connected and the battery, I'm making, right now it is 200 and, oh, the sun's coming out. I'm at 300 watts, still a little cloudy. I'm using 265 of that, which means I've got an excess of 35 watts, roughly. So, the panels are actually running the drill right now, and the excess is going into the battery. So I'm still charging right now, even though I'm running equipment. And that's what I love about having the gold kit, is with five panels that I've got connected right now, even on a cloudy day, I'm still producing more energy than I'm using at this moment. And so I can still be running heavy equipment during the day and charging up the battery. Ideally on a bright sunny day, I'd be making closer to 500 watts. And so I'd have a couple hundred extra watts going to the battery. So I can still charge it in a few hours, no problem. One of the questions I've also got over the last year is why a Faraday bag? And there's multiple reasons. The biggest one is I'm trying to prepare for every situation possible. And one of those situations is an EMP attack or a solar flare. And essentially, an EMP will knock out anything with a microchip. And this is essentially a big box of microchips. Um, anything plugged in to a wall outlet, because that means you're connected to the grid. Or anything that's next to a conductive material. So let's take that outlet, for example. Let's say I've got my outlet here and I've got another device here. Well, the energy can jump up to about six inches from that outlet to the device and short it out. So I want to make sure that I have everything protected as much as I can. The Faraday bag just makes it really easy to keep things stored and protected. Now, the reason I like the Tech Protect Faraday bags is they've been tested time and time and time again by dozens of different agencies, and every single time, the test results have come back positive saying that it is EMP proof. Now, its limitation is it's not super EMP proof. Super EMP is just a different type of EMP bomb. It's just gamma, not uranium or plutonium or anything like that. And so it's got a higher strength EMP wave coming. That's all it is, okay, a higher voltage. 
So all you have to do is take one Faraday bag, put it inside of another Faraday bag, and that makes it super EMP proof. Now this is really easy to put in here. I'm gonna turn it off real quick. Only weighs 20 pounds. These bags are really heavy duty. So you can beat her up with them, okay? And it, it's, it's actually metal sheeting. So, um, you know, it's actual metal and it's pre-insulated so you don't have to put anything else on the inside here to make sure there's no contact between the metal and the device. So now I would put, for example, my watt meter inside there. I'd put my quick charger in here, put my lights, put my timer. There's plenty of room inside this bag to store more things. Now, for example, this is not, this would not die in an EMP because there's no electronics. It's not any type of device, but I keep it in here just so it's all in one place. Now, the other big question that I get is what can I run on my Kodiak? And that's a really simple question, but people can get easily confused on it. The battery inside here is 1100 watts, 1100 watts. The inverter in here is 1500 watts, okay? Battery 1100, inverter 1500. So that means that I can run up to 1500 watts nonstop for as long as the battery will last. Just for math's sake, let's say I've got 1000 watts of energy in the battery and I'm running 1000 watts. Well, that amount of wattage is measured over one hour. So that means I can run the 1000 watts nonstop for basically an hour. Or I could run 100 watts out of a 1000 watt battery capacity for 10 hours, right? So you see how the math works. Where people get confused is they think that they can run 1500 watts nonstop for hours, for example, like a space heater. Now it'll run a space heater, but that's 1500 watts coming from an 1100 watt battery, which means you're only gonna be able to run it for about 40 to 45 minutes or so. Now, the only exception to that is let's say you're making 500 watts from your panels and you've got 1000 watts in your battery for a total of 1500 watts and then you're running equipment that is 1500 watts well that means it's going to run for one hour because it's 1500 watt hours so when people ask what can i run off of it well you can run quite a bit the difference is how long can you run it and that all depends on how much energy you're making as well as how much energy is stored in the battery so you really need to take that into account most people in an emergency are going to be running a refrigerator some lights maybe some fans if it's hot um, there are really small AC units that are about 5,000 BTUs. Those only use about 50 watts an hour. So you could run that on here. There's lots of different things you can run, but the more stuff you run, obviously the faster it's gonna run out. It's just like a gas tank and a gas generator. The only difference is you don't refill it by pouring gas into it. You refill it by having the sun and that energy going into the battery. That's the only difference. So you really need to find out what you need to run in an emergency, and then you can account for how many panels you'll need. So on our power outages, we've had no problem running our fridge, our freezer, a few lights, um, especially the base camp lights, and our TV and our sound bar and our DVD player. And when the power's out, we like to watch movies and stuff as a family, so we're obviously gonna be watching movies using the Kodiak. Now probably the other biggest question I get is what to do for external batteries. Now, as you saw in my previous one year review video, I have this 2000 watt external lithium battery. Now, as you saw in the previous video, this does not work well with this screen. When this is connected to these side posts on the Kodiak, this screen does not read out correctly. So right now it's saying it's using 13 watts. Well, it's using 13 watts to run these lights, the fan, the inverter, and everything on it. So that's normal. If this were plugged into it, it could say it's running 500 watts, when in reality it's not. Or it could say it's running 0 watts, when in reality it's not. Even if I connect the drill press or my freezer or my fridge or anything else like that, the readout is not correct. Now because this watt meter is connected before it reaches the battery, this will still tell me correctly how much I'm making, but it won't tell me how much I'm outputting. And that's the problem with the lithium that's been really hard for energy to figure out is how to get these batteries compatible with the Kodiak. So most likely that's gonna be the solution that'll be fixed in the whatever next generation Kodiak that they make. So this over the last year 
um, they came really close to releasing a battery kit that's lithium iron that can attach here and work really well. But those tiny little things, it's just how electronics work and electricity, you can't just connect things and always make, it doesn't always just work perfectly. There are other companies that I've been talking with that are trying to make a lithium battery that is compatible with the Kodiak. And hopefully that'll come out this summer of 2018, but no guarantees. And so we really keep our fingers crossed, but in the meantime, really the best thing to get is a deep cycle marine battery. You can find them online, you can find them pretty affordably locally, and you'll want to get some heavy duty cabling to attach them. The only difference is to keep in mind with the lead acid batteries, the deep cycle marine battery, is it's not going to last you as long. It's only going to be about 500 cycles at its best, and you can only use 50% of the battery. Now the advantage is the Kodiak will be able to detect the type of battery connected, it being the deep cycle marine, and so you've got 100% of the battery and you can only use 50% well the Kodiak is going to treat that 50% as the full battery capacity so once it reaches that 50% mark it's going to stop using that battery that way it doesn't drain it too far and hurt the battery so ideally each battery if it's roughly 1100 watts just like the the one in here if it's 90 amps at 12 volts so 12 times 90 that's how you get your your wattage let's call it 1100 watts but at 1100 watts, you can only use 50% of it, so that's 550 watts. So each battery that you add at, at 12 volts, 90 amps, you're going to be adding 550 usable watts. And you're going to be able to use those about 500 times. Now they're heavy, but for right now, that's the best option. Hopefully, keep, keep posted on my channel as well as on my website. As soon as we have a compatible working lithium battery, whether it's lithium ion or lithium iron, it'll definitely be up and you guys will be able to see the test and all that. Well, that's my two year review. I still love the Kodiak. It's still the best out there. I highly recommend them. Uh, if, you, if you go to my website and get it, great. I'll do the absolute best pricing I can get. Just contact me and I'll be happy to do what I can for you.